Step back into the dazzling world of the 1962 film Gypsy, a captivating tale that weaves through the twists and turns of the entertainment industry. Directed by Mervyn Leroy, this classic offers a candid look at the life of a determined and ambitious woman navigating the complexities of showbiz. What makes this movie truly special are the moments that leave an indelible mark on viewers. Is there a particular scene or moment that has had a lasting impact on you? As the story unfolds, you'll find yourself immersed in a narrative that combines humor, shock, and sorrow, creating a cinematic experience that is both relatable and thought-provoking. Stay tuned as we delve into some surprising and poignant facts about the film. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to on-screen revelations, there's a lot more to discover. But before we continue, have you ever had a personal story where the movie inspired or impacted your life? As we journey through the memories and moments of this classic, we invite you to share your own cherished experiences. What's your most memorable moment or personal connection with this film? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, grab your popcorn and get ready for an exploration of Gypsy like never before. More funny, shocking, and sad facts await. Keep watching and let the magic of this classic unfold. The 1962 film adaptation of Gypsy, starring Rosalind Russell, has garnered praise over the years for its ability to stand the test of time and appeal to those who haven't had the chance to witness the original stage production. It is considered a more effective cinematic rendition compared to the Betty Midler TV version. While the film stays true to the essence of the stage production, certain studio-driven structural changes and the inclusion of Russell's narration have been criticized. The alteration in perspective softens the character of Mama and hinders the portrayal of her transformation into a formidable force by the end of Act I, a crucial element for the full impact of the redemption at the final curtain. Despite its imperfections, the film remains fundamentally effective regardless of the voice delivering the lines. The revelation that Lisa Kirk dubbed Russell in most of the songs, skillfully executed to the point of deceiving even Russell herself, adds an intriguing layer to the film's history. The chief weakness in the film lies not in Russell's performance or the revised script, but in the casting of Herbie. A realization struck when comparing it to the Tyne Daily revival where the essential earthiness and simultaneous sexuality of Rose were vividly portrayed. The film, while still functioning well, falls short of realizing the full potential of a truly great rendition of Gypsy. The casting choices, particularly in the portrayal of Herbie, could have elevated it further. Nevertheless, the film is worth appreciating for what it is a solid cinematic adaptation with missed opportunities. In the unvarnished world of the 1962 film Gypsy, certain nuances eluded the musical rendition. Notably, the main character discreetly underwent dental realignment, courtesy of a dentist under the sway of a gangster named Waxy Gordon. The procedure potentially enhanced her professional trajectory. Amidst the tapestry of characters, an uncredited teenage Danny Locken assumed the role of one of Dainty June's farm boys. His presence subtly graced scenes like the birthday party and Mr. Goldstone episode. Locken later garnered recognition as Barnaby Tucker in the cinematic adaptation of Hello, Dolly. He reprised the role on Broadway alongside Ethel Merman, the originator of Rose in the stage production of Gypsy. Adding a layer of connection, Rosalind Russell, a key figure in the film, had previously collaborated with June Havoc, the real-life dainty June in My Sister Eileen. In the unadorned narrative of the 1962 movie, these details paint a richer portrait, connecting characters beyond the spotlight, illustrating the interconnectedness of the entertainment realm. Crafted without the frills, these snippets shed light on hidden facets of the film's history, providing a glimpse into the interconnected world of Hollywood. Jules Stein, the composer of the 1962 film, personally directed the iconic overture, a celebrated piece in Broadway history. However, for the general release, the overture's length was cut from nearly five minutes to two. In the film, one can observe two dissolves featuring Stein. Despite being commonly referred to as Mama Rose in reviews and discussions, Rosalind Russell's character is never addressed that way in the movie. The closest anyone comes is Madame Rose. During the film's production, the real gypsy Rose Lee, the inspiration behind the character, visited the set. She offered Natalie Wood some guidance on her stripping routines, adding an authentic touch to Wood's portrayal. These behind-the-scenes insights into the film enrich its history, providing a glimpse into the meticulous work of the composer and the subtle details that contribute to the authenticity of the characters. 
the convergence of real-life inspiration and cinematic adaptation underscores the interconnected nature of the entertainment industry. In the 1962 film, various behind-the-scenes details add depth to the narrative. Lisa Kirk, who vocally dubbed Rosalind Russell's majority of songs, remarkably resembled Russell physically. Interestingly, a caricature of Ethel Merman, the original Rose on Broadway, adorned Tessie Tura's dressing room wall. Rose Marie was also considered for dubbing Rose's vocals, highlighting the meticulous casting decisions made during production. These lesser-known aspects contribute to the film's authenticity, revealing the attention to detail in both casting and set design. The composer, Jules Stein, not only created the celebrated overture, but personally directed it, making it an iconic piece in Broadway history. However, for the general release, the overture's length was significantly shortened from nearly five minutes to two. This decision, reflecting the challenges of adapting Broadway to the big screen, showcases the intricate choices made to suit cinematic constraints. During filming, Rosalind Russell's character is consistently referred to as Madame Rose, not Mama Rose, a subtle distinction worth noting. The real-life Gypsy Rose Lee, who inspired the character, visited the set and offered guidance to Natalie Wood on her stripping routines, enhancing the authenticity of Wood's portrayal. These interactions between the real inspiration and the cinematic adaptation provide a glimpse into the convergence of reality and fiction in the entertainment industry. In summary, the film's production nuances, from vocal dubbing to set decorations, underscore the meticulous efforts invested in bringing Gypsy to life on screen. These lesser-known details enrich the understanding of the movie's history, emphasizing the interconnected nature of the entertainment world. Rosalind Russell clinched her fifth Golden Globe for the film, a milestone unmatched at the time. Notably, she never secured a competitive Academy Award, Initially attempting her own singing, Russell's vocals ended up dubbed in the film with her attempts showcased in a CD bonus feature. After Ethel Merman's death, a tape of Russell's recordings emerged from Merman's closet, revealing a curious posthumous act of keeping Russell's vocals, possibly fueled by Merman's disappointment at not landing a role in the film. Burt Michaels, uncredited as Yonkers, previously took on a jet role in West Side Story, sharing the screen with Gypsy co-star Natalie Wood. This connection highlights the intertwining roles of actors in different productions. In a surprising twist, the film also features uncredited actor Burt Michaels, who previously played a jet in West Side Story alongside Gypsy co-star Natalie Wood. This unexpected link underscores the interconnected nature of the entertainment industry. The nuances of Russell's vocal performance, the discovery of recordings in Merman's possession, and Michael's dual roles contribute to the intricate tapestry of Gypsy's history, shedding light on the unique dynamics within the world of the film. Rosalind Russell and Natalie Wood, co-stars in the film, developed a close friendship off-screen. This real-life connection added depth to their on-screen dynamics, creating a genuine rapport between them. The camaraderie between Russell and Wood, though not directly portrayed in the film, subtly influenced their performances, contributing to the authenticity of their characters. In a departure from the original musical, the film introduces the character of Herbie early on, portrayed as Uncle Jocko. This alteration, seemingly a strategic move to showcase Carl Malden's presence sooner, deviates from the stage version. The decision to merge Herbie's character with Uncle Jocko reflects the pragmatic choices made in adapting the musical for the cinematic format. Paul Wallace, cast as Tulsa in the film, played a significant role not only on screen but also in the broader history of the production. Notably, Wallace originated the role of Tulsa in the original Broadway production, bringing continuity between the stage and film adaptations. His dual contribution underscores the seamless transition of certain actors from the theatrical origins to the cinematic rendition. These behind-the-scenes connections Russell and Wood's off-screen friendship, the strategic introduction of Herbie, and Wallace's dual involvement weave an intricate narrative that goes beyond the surface of the 1962 film. These aspects, often overshadow Wood by the central plot, shed light on the collaborative decisions made during the adaptation process, offering a glimpse into the nuanced dynamics that shape cinematic storytelling. 